I want to welcome everybody again. Okay, I know I just <laughs> introduced it. The, the goal tonight is to experience Shavuot. Okay, to enter into the day. This is not an ordinary day. It's an appointed time. It's Amikra Kodesh, a holy rehearsal. A holy gathering. That's another way of saying gathering is a holy rehearsal. We're rehearsing something. There's something coming in the future, and we are rehearsing it, and we're getting ready for it. Um, there's things that happen on Shavuot over and over again in history, and today they are happening. So let's all come into this expecting God to do something. Okay, we are we are rehearsing together, but you know who else comes to rehearsal? Messiah. Okay, God, He gave them so that we can be with Him and practice for where the real thing comes. Now, now Shavuot. The Pizza Shavuot is, uh, it, it, it was fulfilled in the book of Acts. But yet, there's still a future fulfillment. It's the same way with Passover. Yeshua said, I will not drink this cup with you until it is fulfilled in the kingdom. That was the cup of sanctification used in the Passover Seder. Okay? And he said, it will be fulfilled in the kingdom. So that means it's a Passover Seder that's coming. Yeshua, when he came the first time, fulfilled all the spring festivals. And this is still a spring festival or a summer festival now, actually. Okay, uh, so what we're what we're doing here is we're not only rehearsing what happened, but what is still yet to happen. Okay, there's going to be showers of blessing when when the kingdom come. Okay, and we're going to talk about water. We're going to talk about showers. We're going to talk about the shower of the spirit. Okay, that's a shower I want to get into. Okay, we need physical water showers too. You know, but we <laughs> we really need the shower of the Spirit. So let's just pray. Abba and Amy, Yeshua, Lord, I just ask, Lord, for you to have your way with all of us today. Lord, that we would encounter you, Lord. You know what? This whole thing is about encountering you. The very first Shavuot was an encounter with you, and the next Shavuot, the, the Pentecost that happened in the book of Acts, was an encounter with you. Abba, and we want to encounter you, Lord. You're the giver of the Word of God. We celebrate the birthday of the, word, of the Word of God. And we celebrate the birth of the congregation or the church of God also today. Lord, this is, this is a very important day. And everything you've done through these spring festivals, Abba, have been prophetic. Abba, and, it, and it's caused all the world to participate in it, even if they didn't understand one thing about it. Because most even believers don't understand your calendar. They're not walking in your calendar. Uh, but, and I just ask, Lord, that you would cause all of us to realize that you have a calendar and that your Holy Spirit walks in that calendar. And today, we're celebrating the day when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon all the believers and even keeps getting poured out upon everyone that confesses that Yeshua is the Messiah and everyone that gives their life to Him and He takes away their sins. Abba, I ask that you would touch everybody needs a touch of healing, Lord. Physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing, Abba. Healing of our souls, Abba. We are all damaged from this life. But we also know that our eyes are not on this world. Though, though we live in it, we are, you know, our home is not here. We're waiting for a city whose builder and maker is God. So, Lord, I just ask, please, Lord, that you touch every one of us, Lord, in, in different ways, Lord, and seal this instruction inside, inside of our hearts. And, Lord, I, I just ask, Lord, that anyone who, who needs healing, anyone who needs a refreshing of your spirit, would get refreshed, Lord, that you come in our midst, your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, would touch everybody that needs to be touched, that needs to be healed, that needs to be encouraged and strengthened, Abba. To get through another day, even another week, and, and what's coming, Abba. We also know, Lord, this is the beginning of a whole new thing that you're about to do. And the greatest harvest maybe the world has ever seen. In the name of Yeshua. Well, no, well,
the day of Shavuot, there was, it was going to be, there was a shofar blast. And it got louder and louder and louder. And the people were afraid because it got so loud. Because the one blowing it was God. Okay. One of these days is going to be another shofar blown. Okay. And that shofar will be with Messiah at his coming for his bride. That shofar will blow louder and louder and louder so that even the dead will respond. And we who are alive will be changed and transformed. But right now, we're thinking about Shavuot, and we're thinking about that first one. And so let's get into this, and go ahead, let's do the blessing. Blessed are you, Yehovah Elohim, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us in your commandments and has commanded us to sound the Shofar. Yeah, 
ונתנו מכל העמים ונתן לנו את תורתו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה Bless the Lord, the blessed one. Blessed is the Lord, the blessed one for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and gave us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. That blessing has even more meaning today. Yes. Turn on uh, Exodus 19, 16 to 20. Do not be afraid for, for Jehovah, for God has come in order to test you, 
in order that the fear of him may remain with you so that you may not sin. Okay, so let's look at one more scripture. Um, Acts 2, 1 to 12. We're going to talk now about another Shavuot. I'm just going to read you the scriptures about it. You all know this one, right? Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost had come. So, everything all right there? It's because your phone keeps auto-focusing. Oh, okay. Acts, Acts chapter 2. 1 to 12. This first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Yeshua began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs appearing to them over a period of 40 days. Remember we've been counting the Omer, the first 40 days he appeared to many people and then 500 all at once. And speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God, what was he telling us? Remember, we're going to find out later, he sent them out by twos. What did he teach them? He wasn't telling them to teach about my death, burial, and resurrection. It wasn't, it didn't happen yet. He said, tell them about the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom has to be restored. And that's what we're going to be talking about. The gospel of the kingdom. The good things concerning the kingdom of God. Gather them together. He commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Okay, and so keep keeping reading with verse 6. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times and the seasons which your father has fixed by his own authority. Now, let me just clarify that real quick before someone gets upset about that. It was not for them because they were not there for the coming of the kingdom. But they were saying, Are you now bringing the kingdom to the earth? And he told them, It's not for you to know that because you're going to die way before the kingdom comes. Okay? But you'll, you'll, you know, you'll be resurrected at the end. Okay, so what, what he's telling them is that it wasn't for them to know the times and seasons, because they weren't the ones that were going to be there at the end. But guess what? It's for us to know. And remember, we're going to read, well, maybe we'll read about it, but in Thessalonians, it says, This day, the day of the Lord, the terrible day of the Lord, when the Messiah comes, okay, will not overtake you, Thessalonians, because you know the times and seasons. Okay, so just to get past that times and seasons issue that a lot of people have, the Father has fixed. But you will receive power when the Ruach HaKodesh has come upon you. So he's saying, now you disciples and all you who are believers will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you should be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently on the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. And they also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Yeshua, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have seen you have watched him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Yerushalayim, a Sabbath day, day's journey away. Okay. Now why am I sharing this with you? Because our eyes should be looking up. Looking up at our redemption. It is coming, and we're ever so closer. It's now 2,000 years later, just about. So we're getting ready to, to see his return. So, uh, Anan Am. Okay, it's time for you to come up. <laughs> and no, no, it's time, it means, it means people of the cloud, am I right? People of the cloud. Okay, but all you are people of the cloud. 
So I ask for you to participate. I ask for you to worship. Sing. Get into it. Because God loves, God loves for us to sing to Him. God loves for us to worship Him. He loves for us to dance before Him. If you don't want to dance in a circle, then just dance where you are. Let loose. Be free. The Holy Spirit is here. And, and God is about to do something great. I'm just going to do my four songs and we'll get back to this.
We're going to continue the worship for a little bit. Listen, I gave you a... I gave you a set of notes, but we're not going to follow the notes exactly, okay? We have something in the corner there. Did I get four people to stretch it out? Four guys. Well, we're short on guys, so... <laughs> <laughs> This is a chuppah that me and Christina got married under. But it's, it was a type of chuppah that Israel got betrothed to God under. And we were finished in a bit. We're going to have everybody stand under it. So we're going to still be four people at that point. And we're going to recommit our lives and pray under the chuppah. Okay, I just wanted you to see it right now. Because we're going to make this commitment to the Lord when we're finished. Okay. Okay, we're going to come back with this chuppah. Okay. I just wanted you to see it. Today is called the, the Erosim. Okay. It's, it's the betrothal. God betrothed Israel under a marriage canopy. The marriage canopy, canopy was a mountain. Okay? A whole mountain. Okay? A mountain on fire with his presence. Okay? A mountain with shofars being blown. A mountain with tongues of fire being seen. Okay? And and it's a time of recommitment, but that's just one of the things about what Shavuot is about. Okay, so if you have the copy of the teaching, you can we can refer to it, but we're not going to go word for word through it. We met Kat and the Omer for 49 days. Today was number 50. Okay. And there's a reason, okay? We begin on the Sunday after Passover. Now, let me explain something to you. I know you may have heard that all the rest of the Jewish community already had Shavuot, already had Pentecost. But they're celebrating it according to rabbinic standards, which is not biblical. This is the only thing they do not do right on the counting. Now, sometimes it works out that they count right. It depends on when Passover comes, okay? This year, it came in the early part of the week. The Jews always count the day after Passover. They start counting the Omer. But it says in the Bible that you count the day after the weekly Sabbath, okay? Now, the, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is considered by the Jews to be a Sabbath. It's even in the New Testament it listed as a high Sabbath, but in the in the Torah it does not call it a Sabbath. It calls it a holy rehearsal. It's a cessation of work. So he said in Leviticus 23, you count from the day after the weekly Sabbath. It's there in the Hebrew. And you count seven complete weeks, as we did. And now we have come to Shavuot. And of course, it's not officially begun because the sun is still up, okay? However, it's okay because by the time we're going to be finished today, it will be down and we will have entered into that day. And it starts in the evening, okay? So, you know, I just wanted to share with you this whole season that we've been in has been a preparation. And isn't it interesting that it started off with a quarantine, okay? All right, we were quarantined, okay? But it's ended up with us being back, back to worshiping God, back into our places of worship, gathering together, as it says in Hebrews 
1025, gather yourselves together all the more as you see that day approaching. But during this whole season, it's about God giving gifts. God giving things. He gave the Sabbath to Israel. He gave the Omer to Israel. He told them to collect so much, they ate angels food. And Yeshua said, I am the manna that came out of heaven. But here's a little secret. Manna actually means what is it? But we know who it is. Yeshua. But our people do not recognize him yet. So it's manna to them. But what is it to us? Before Yeshua came, it was called the Word of God. Devar Elohim. Okay? Yeshua is the Word of God. Okay? Jesus our Messiah. Okay? And, and so, you know, when we're celebrating this, we're celebrating the Word of God. The Word of God was first spoken on the mountain. Okay? And on this day, it was the, the Sunday after the, the seventh Shabbat. Okay, from the time they came out of Egypt. But for us, it's the, seventh, it's the day after the seventh Shabbat. Okay, it's the seventh for them in a different way. We don't know exactly what day. We, we, know, we know that it was a Sunday. We know that it was the first day of the, of the week. And it was the first day of the week when Yeshua resurrected, okay? And, and seven weeks later, something else happens. The outpouring of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Okay, the same day, the, the word was spoken from Mount Sinai, the, the word of God. Okay, it's the same day that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the believers. What I want to show you here is they are the same day and a lot of things that happen all one happened on the other but what was different is while it was just words spoken by god at the mountain on fire for us or i should say for the first believers it was the power of god coming upon them the holy spirit coming upon them and what does the first fruits mean did you know that the day of Yeshua's resurrection is called bikari first fruits it's the first fruits of the barley harvest do you know that that today is called first fruits, Bikarim? It's the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Do you see the wheat on the on the on the picture? That's wheat. Okay, so during Bikarim, Yeshua and also those who rose with him, by the way, it says many of the prophets were seen in the streets. They were all going around, witnessing to their families, witnessing all around. Okay, during those 40 days while Yeshua was witnessing to all these different people. During the counting of the Omer. Okay, and it was during this time that they spoke, uh, that Yeshua spoke the Holy Spirit to his disciples in one of the meetings that they had after his resurrection. Because he was, in, he was enduing his disciples with a second Adam. Adam failed. Adam sinned against God. But Yeshua was the second Adam. So when he breathed the Holy Spirit into them in one of those meetings that happened during the counting of Omer, it was the second Adam, the life-giving spirit. Okay? So, what about the harvest? All of the counting of the Omer has to do with harvest. The development of the fivefold ministry for the betterment of the congregation to bring us into unity. We should be in unity. We should not be divided by denominations. We should not be divided by our understanding of things. According to the scriptures in Ephesians, there's one doctrine. There's one belief. There's one faith. But we're all divided over so many different things. But it's one. Yeshua said, in John 17, before he went to the cross, may they be one as me and you are, Father. It was his prayer that we would be one. Yeshua was the first fruits of the big harvest of all mankind. The first harvest of the year is the barley harvest. Yeshua and all those that rose with him were a part of the barley harvest. 
But then comes the wheat harvest. And do you know when they get ready to do the wheat harvest? It's on Shavuot. And on Shavuot, what they do is they offer up two loaves. Now, I, I have it here, two loaves. We're going to wave it in a, in a little bit. Because, and what's very interesting is these loaves were made with wheat and were made with leaven. Leaven represents sin. All of us have to deal with our flesh. All of us have to deal with sin. It says in the scriptures that he who says he's not a sinner is not of, of, of God. Okay, or is a liar. Okay. We are all sinners saved by his grace and his mercy. And every day we have to battle against our sin nature. But the Holy Spirit was given to us to battle effectively against our sin nature. Okay, so we have the wheat. Okay, we have the barley, we have the wheat. Okay, the barley was Yeshua and all those that rose with him. And there was probably every righteous person that had died up to the other man on the cross who repented. Rose with them. They all have new bodies now. But everybody that died from that point on is considered weak. We are the weak. The apostles were the first weak. That's why the Holy Spirit came down upon them. 120 people gathered. The Holy Spirit came upon the weak. To begin, they were the first fruits of the wheat harvest. The Bikurim. Okay, but we are, we are now also, all of us are weak. You all remember the scriptures? Or the scripture that says that, um, you know, someone said, well, shouldn't we pull up the, the, the tares? Um, and, you know, no, you'll injure the wheat. At the end, God himself will separate the wheat from the tares. This is all of us. This is all of us, all the righteous at the end will be separated. We are considered wheat. There's a great harvest, and it starts today. It starts today. Okay, and I really believe after this virus that has gone around and has caused people to stay at home and to look into their lives, at least hopefully looking into their lives and not being lazy and not being lethargic, and not just enjoying their lives with their, with their loads of supplies of uh, toilet paper and, and uh, hand sanitizer, okay? Uh, no, you know, we, <laughs> we are, we should be contemplating what is God saying and doing. That's what we should have been doing. God had us at home praying. He had us talking to our families, encouraging our families. We are about to enter into the time of the harvest. Okay, this harvest. Now, me and Josh were going over the words for both uh, both, both bikurims. The bikurim of barley and the, and the bikurim of uh, wheat. So Josh, you want to share? Yeah, I'm just finishing it real quick. Okay, so you, you, wanna, you can't bring it up yet? No, I got it. Okay. Okay. All right. Here it is. okay, we're gonna break this down real quick. Okay. Hopefully it won't be too difficult for you to learn. Yeah. Um, all right, so I broke them both down. And the first one, uh, we know that when Yeshua came, that was the early rain. Because he poured out his spirit upon all the believers that are there. Well, as Rabbi brings up, the, the name of the of the barley in Hebrew is called Se'oah. And, and it means, uh, literally, is that uh, the fire of understanding is from the man who is first in the spirit. Okay? And that, and that, was, Yeshua. that was Yeshua. Okay? So the second coming, or the latter rain, um, is the wheat harvest, which is called the hita. And hita means to have a life that is a witness to the spirit. Okay. Do you hear that? A life that is a witness. That's what you are. A life that is a witness of the Spirit. And the Spirit is in you. And the Spirit wants to refresh you. Yes, God, like John. This is why Yeshua said, He who believes in me will not only do the same things that I have done, he will do greater things because I go to the Father. Amen. And he said, I have to go to the Father that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. 
It's, he said, I have witnessed as the barley harvest. Now it's time for you to witness. You are my wheat harvest. Bring in the wheat. Bring in the souls. Bring them in. It's time. Okay? You don't have to be afraid of what you will say. God will give you the words to speak. Speak in love. Speak in truth. Don't compromise. Okay? Uh, if people don't want to hear you, then that's between them and, and God. But for those who want to, then you, it says Yeshua said, always be ready for an answer when anyone has a question. Learn the ways of Elohim. Learn the ways of God. Learn his calendar. Because now we're entering a whole new season on this calendar. The season of the week. It's a season also of testing. We, we were also grounded. That's another way of putting uh, being stuck in our houses. We were grounded, no one's flying, right? Okay. Uh, in our houses during the book of Leviticus. And Vaikra, which is where we get the word Leviticus from, means preach. What are we preaching? What's in Leviticus? The word of God. Yeshua is the word of God. The festivals, the calendar, the the sacrifices, all of them point to Yeshua. And if you don't know how they point to Yeshua, there are some very good teachers out there. I can teach you, but also there are very good teachers out there. There's Jonathan Cott, there's Mark Biltz, there's lots of places online to learn about it. But if you'd like to come and learn with us, you're welcome to. Okay, so what happened? Because we're trying to understand, they, what were they collecting during the counting of the Omer? They were counting, they were collecting bread from heaven. Well, it's it's a pre preparation. Israel was to be the light of the world, to be a witness to the whole world, to bring in the harvest. But they missed it. Now, believers, Christians, are supposed to be a witness to the whole world, to the kingdom. But they missed it. I always want some souls along the way. There's a lot of people that come into the kingdom. But are they ready? Are people ready? Yeshua said, will he find faith when he returns? Okay, so that's something to consider. They collected an omer a day. When they were thirsty, he poured it, he poured water out of the rock. Yeshua is the rock. Our water, our bread, and the little flying quail. Okay. He had the quail fly really low, and then even a kid could grab it out of the air. So they had meat, too. Okay? And and he provided for them, and he gave them the Sabbath, and he gave them, like, so much. He, he gave them a cloud by day, so that the sun beating down, and you know all about the sun out here in El Paso. I know it. We all know it. That's why it's a little warm in here. Unfortunately. Okay, but the, the, the thing is he gave the cloud by day to keep them cool. And at night, it got cold in the wilderness during the cold time of the year, and he gave them a cloud of fire. Think about that. All their warmth came from the fire of God. All their coolness came from the cloud of glory. Let's go up to glory. Let's yes. get the song. I want to go up. It says we sit in heavenly places with Yeshua. Okay, so, so anyhow, there's some very interesting things. Uh, he had to get his people unified. He said, on the third day of the month of Sabah, which we're in, okay, the third month of the year, it was the second, it was the first year, and they had just come out of Egypt a few months before that. He he, he tells them. Get yourself ready for three days, because I'm going to come upon the mountain. Okay, you're going to meet me. Okay, and so so you know he says on the third day to prepare for three days. So on the sixth day of the month of Saban is when this would happen. Okay, so but they all had to be of one accord. All together, they made an agreement. We hear and we will do what you said. Moses. We will get ourselves ready. Okay? How about in the first century? All the believers were gathered, 120 people, at the temple, in a room. They called the upper room. Okay?
okay? And they were all gathered, and they were waiting for the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit came down. And it was powerful. Okay? And this is another encounter with God. This happens over and over again. And it can happen today. Okay? And this is what I want to see happen today. Well, we have to be unified. We have to be in unity. All the disciples were unified. Okay, so, looking at Exodus 19, 16 to 25, which we read already, and 21 to 21, from early morning, dense clouds covered the peak of the mountain. Thunder and lightning was frequently seen and heard. The top of the mountain was enveloped in fire and smoke. Can you imagine a whole mountain enveloped in fire and smoke? The children of Israel were brought by Moses to the foot of Mount Sinai. And they stood in awe. Moses went up alone on the mountain, and he near the top of a mighty voice, announced the Ten Words, the Ten Commandments, the instructions which I also obey. Well, look at what it says. In, in, in Exodus 19, 19, you can't read it in your regular English Bibles. You need one of the Jewish ones with the Hebrew. But I'm going to read it as best as I can. A ram's horn, a shofar was sounded. The sound of the shofar became very strong, and it grew louder and louder. And when the voice of the shofar sounded long, and waxed louder and louder. Moshe spoke, and Elohim answered him by a voice. And all the people saw the thunderings. But what did they see? The word for thunders is the word kol, or kolot. And that means a voice, a noise. It's been interpreted as thunder, but it actually means call out loud. It wasn't thunder that they heard. They heard voices. Okay. And it says the lightning flashes. They saw lightning flashes. You know what the word for lightning flashes is? It wasn't lightning, which is Barak. It was la lapid. It means they saw torches. Okay? Then, then they heard the sound of the shofar and the mountain smoking. So what is it? It says here, look at the bottom of, of page two. Of your notes. I'm sorry if you don't have a copy of the notes. And if, if you're not on my email list, please get on my email list and I will email it to you. In the commentary by Rabbi Yochanan, he says, When Elohim, or God, gave the words on Mount Sinai, he displayed untold marvels to the children of Israel with his voice. What happened? God spoke and the voice reverberated through the whole world. And all the people saw the thunderings. Elohim's voice, as it was uttered, split up into 70 voices in 70 languages so that all the nations should understand. Okay? Um, there were 70 nations back then. Today there are hundreds of them. But back then there was only 70. And you can read that in the top of page 3. Okay? In Deuteronomy 32, 8, we read, When the Most High divided up the nations, their inheritance, when he divided separated the, the sons of Adam and set the bounds for the people according to the number of the children of, of Israel. Uh, in Shemot 1, 1, 1 to 5, or Exodus 1, 1 to 5, we can see that the number of the children of Israel came to, that came to Egypt was 70. Therefore, 70 voices was interpreted by Rabbi Yochanan, representing all the nations. So, what the people saw was 70 tongues of fire. All speaking the, the, the language of the nations. Well, what happened in the book of Acts? Little Lapid was appearing, tongues of fire upon them, and they were all speaking in tongues. But there were people representing all the nations that were there to celebrate Shavuot. But that year, they were hearing something else. They were hearing in the voice of people who didn't speak their language, them hearing about the glorious things of God and His kingdom. In their own language, because everybody understood. Like, you know, over there was, was you know, Peter and, and John and James, and maybe James spoke Spanish, but John spoke Lithuanian, or something like that, and the Lithuanians heard in, in their own tongue. Everybody, they all spoke the tongues of all the nations at that time. That tells you there were probably 120 nations at that time. But in, in the book of Acts, there was, I'm sorry, in, in the book of Exodus, 
there were 70. 70 tons of fire, 120 tons of fire in the book of Acts. It was the same thing. It wasn't thunderings, it was voices. It says that they saw the voices in the Hebrew. I didn't see a voice. A tongue of fire? A tongue of fire? Okay. So, um, they were all gathered together in one accord. Now, going on, let's just talk about a few other things that happened. Okay. It says here, uh, or page four of your notes, this is what happened. We heard what happened on Mount Sinai, right? So let's, let's talk about what happened in Acts chapter two. From heaven, the noise of a violent rushing wind filled the whole house. The wind represents the spirit. And there appeared to them tongues of, as a fire distributing themselves and they rested on each one of them. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long, it became louder and louder. Moshe spoke and God answered him with voices. And Jehovah came down upon Mount Sinai at the top of the mountain. And Jehovah called Moshe to the top of the mountain and Moshe went up. Now all the people saw the thunders and lightning flashes, which actually means tongues of fire. Okay. The voice of the, of the shofar and the mountain smoking. And they trembled and they stood far off and they said to Moses, you speak with us and we will hear and let not God speak with us lest we die. They were so afraid that they would die. And Moshe said to the people, do not fear for God has come to test you that, you're, that you may that his fear may be before you, that, that you may not sin. Listen, we all want the glory to come, right? But it's not going to come if we don't fear the Lord and have respect. And now, fear the Lord is not like, oh, I'm afraid. It means that we respect his power and his glory. Remember, Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts, they didn't respect his glory. They lied to the Holy Spirit, and their lives were taken from them. When his glory and his power come, which I believe is about to happen, we have to respect that. We have to know not to try to control it. One of the one, one of my personal beliefs is the two of the sons of Aaron, uh, uh, Abihu Nadav and Abihu, did not respect the glory of the Lord, and it took their lives. We have to fear the Lord because you know what? Some of our lives will be taken if we think we can control when the Holy Spirit moves. You know what? There are a lot of people out there that are saying, I'm just waiting for the Holy Spirit to move. I don't want to be a part of any church. I don't want to be a part of any synagogue. I just want to be where the Holy Spirit is moving. Okay, so they come and they visit when the Holy Spirit is moving and doing powerful things and they try to control it. Those people will be taken out when that time comes. Because they're trying to control something they don't understand. The Lord wants us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yeshua said, those are the worshipers that the Lord will receive, right? So let me add something to this. Add something to what happened on the first one. What was given at Mount Sinai? Word. The words of the Torah, the commandments, the instructions. They were spoken by God in 70 different languages. Okay. But they all heard it in Hebrew. They were offered, and only Israel said, yes, we hear, we will do. Okay, but, so that's the word of God. That's the Torah. But then, on, on the, the Mount Moriah, the Holy Spirit came down, and the word was planted on people's hearts, inside of us, through the power of the Spirit of God. So that's the Spirit. The spirit of the Torah. There's the letter of the law. Just the words do nothing. But the spirit of the law. But still the words are the words of truth. So there's truth and there's spirit. There's spirit and there's truth. God wants us to know him and worship him in the spirit and in truth. Thy word is truth, Yeshua said. In John 17, let's get back to the word of God. You have to be balanced by spirit and truth. If you can't just have the spirit and do whatever you want. Okay, and you can't have just the word. My people have the word of God and they celebrate the festivals. But it's the letter of the law. But you know what? All of us 
ones who believe in Yeshua, we have the spirit and the letter. And we see Yeshua. Yeshua said, that when he talked to the Pharisees and the, and the scribes and the Sadducees, and he said that, um, that you don't believe me. Moshe spoke of me. You don't even believe his words. We are here to preach Yeshua in the Torah. We are not here to preach another Torah. We're not here to preach another Jesus, another Yeshua. There's only one Yeshua. There's only one Torah. Okay, it's the same. One of the same. This we see this by the Holy Spirit. We see this word. We see Yeshua. When we lift up this Torah and we bring it around and people kiss it, okay, it, it has nothing to do with worshiping an idol. It has to do with seeing Yeshua. Because in the kingdom, Yeshua is going to be all around and everybody, like, like they were when he came the first time. But he's going to be all over and everybody's going to want to sit under him and learn from him. They're all going to be around him, kissing him and loving him. It's not going to be like rejection anymore. They're not going to be arguing with him. He is the Torah. When he comes back, in the book of Revelation, does it say he's coming back to Yeshua? The one who brings salvation? It says his name is the Word of God. He was the Word of God before He came and He became Yeshua, coming down to earth for us, to save us from our sins. But when He comes back, He's coming to Israel to save them as Yeshua. And it says they will look on Him and they will pierce. But He's coming to the world to bring judgment. <laughs> okay. He's coming as the Word of God, because it's the Word of God that will judge us at the end. That's what Yeshua even said. So, Two tables of stone. The Holy Spirit written on people's hearts. Okay? Written by the finger of God in the book in, in, in the book of Exodus. The Spirit of God. Written by the Spirit of God in, in the book of Acts. Three thousand people died because of the, the golden calf. When Mose went up for 40 days, he comes back down, they built a golden calf. Three thousand people died. You know what happened after the Holy Spirit came? Three thousand people were saved. Okay. So do you see the opposite? One is death. One is just the letter without Messiah, and the other is the life of Messiah and the Spirit of Messiah. It brings life. Okay, Mount Sinai, all smoke, the letter of the law. We have to do his word. You must do this. Don't do that. But on Mount Moriah, it, at the temple, 120 people. Okay, Mount Sinai. Okay. There's a, a, a whole piece about it. That what was happening. That was changing people, transforming people. It's a betrothal. In, in Exodus 19 and 20, God was taking a wife. Moses, the friend of the groom, was taking, because he was a friend of God, right? He was taking his God's bride, Israel, and betrothing her underneath the mountain. Some translations literally said, but I don't believe it, but some translations literally said the whole mountain lifted up and they went underneath. Okay, but that's, you know, more traditional. I mean, now, that would be pretty supernatural, I would think, the whole mountain lifting up. Okay. Um, and then there's another, that's called, by the way, the Shitre Elusim is the betrothal. What does Yeshua do? He says, I go and prepare a place for you. And therefore, uh, the Holy Spirit must come, and basically he will reveal everything that I want to reveal to you. Okay. So basically, that's the gift. The Father gives a gift to the bride. Messiah gives a gift to the bride to help her to live at, until he gets the house prepared. Okay? He's been preparing a house for us. He's coming to get his bride. When? Rosh Hashanah. Yom Teruah, the day of the blowing of the trumpet. But we had the, the betrothal. Now, in the world of the Gentiles, they give each other a, 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 an engagement ring and they say, okay, we're you know, we're going to be married, okay? But guess what? When you make a shit to the Erezim, it's the contract of a marriage. It's a marriage contract. You know what the marriage contract for the Jews is? 
the Torah. And guess what? And for all of us who believe in Yeshua, it's the Torah. It's the, that's your guarantee. You know what it says in there? It says in there that the husband is required to provide food, clothing, and conjugal rights. That's intimacy, passionate intimacy. So he, no matter what we do, that's his requirement upon us. Then he gives us that. Well, guess what? Yeshua said, why do you worry about what you eat? Food. Why do you worry about what you wear? Clothing. He says, aren't sparrows a rain? And doesn't God take care of the sparrows? How much more will he take care of you? He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things that you need will be met. Amen. Take that citrate and a seed. Very personal. You are married, and guess what? The only way to to stop it is a divorce. And I'm talking about the Edusim. I'm talking about the marriage contract where you haven't sealed it with the intimacy, yet, you know, with the the, the you know the, the holy marriage bed. In in our way of putting it, okay? It's that's Rosh Hashanah Yom Teruah, okay? But we're right now awaiting our Messiah, and He's given us the gift of the Father, and He's given us the gift of Yeshua, okay? So He's given us that, okay? Now, think about it. What is food, clothing, and conjugal rights? Food, the Word of God. <laughs> clothing, the Spirit. We're clothed with the anointing. So what is it? Spirit and truth. The Word of God and Spirit, okay? And that's why we have to worship Him like that. It's a marriage thing. We're, that's He's his obli obliging his marriage contract to us. Okay? We have a contract. You have a marriage contract. Think about that. That's your marriage contract. So why wouldn't you want to get into this? Not by the letter of the law. Oh, I must do the Sabbath. Oh, I, I must eat kosher. No. That's why. Look, here's the spirit. Why do we want us to eat kosher? Okay. Okay, well, because these animals represent demons, and these animals represent the spirit, and what God is doing, and what God can teach you about what he's doing. It, it has to do with instruction in righteousness to know Yeshua. That's what this word is. Okay, and, and that's all we're here for, is to know him, to understand him, to walk with our Lord, to mature, not to stay like baby. Like a baby, goo goo gaga. No, no, we, we need to mature. How else are we going to learn how to stand in the wicked day, in the evil day, unless we mature? And how do we mature? Unless we study the word and the spirit. No, Yeshua. This is Yeshua. You know, and, and it's like that. That's all what we're here for. And he's given us the ability by giving us the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, to lead us, what? Into all truth. The Holy Spirit was given for that. To teach us how to walk in the truth by the Spirit. You know, a lot of people, you know, probably think that if they saw me, maybe Orthodox Jews, they would say, you don't do enough Torah, and you don't do enough blessings and prayers and, and all this other stuff. You know what? I do enough. You know, I, I I just I can't stand religion because in, in a sense because it's become so religious. I won't do the same thing every week. Okay, God is not like that. I think if Yeshua came, where would you think he'd be happy? In a place that does the same prayers, even though the prayers of the Torah every week? Or would he be happy with the people that want to do whatever he wants to do? That maybe he says, I want to do something different. Oh look. They, they want me to do whatever they whatever I want to do here. That's what I want. I want him to, to allow us so that we can do whatever we want to do here. We play rock music here, okay? Well, not exactly rock music, but close to it. Okay? It works. We do messianic worship, but we don't do messianic worship maybe like a lot of messianic groups do. Uh, we have fun, okay? We enjoy worshiping God the way we are. Okay, I don't have to be the what people expect a rabbi to do. I can be what God wants this rabbi to be. I don't care what people think. And we can't care about what people think. We this whole world is trying to make everybody else happy. I don't care. 
I, I will not, I, I am approachable, I can be corrected. If I'm teaching something wrong, show me, okay, I was wrong, I taught that wrong, okay? But if I'm right, and that person who's trying to correct me is wrong, okay, that's a whole different story, then they're gonna have to do the research, okay? But what I'm saying is, you notice that in your notes, there's a bunch of words, and you know, I make, the, I make these portions where people can study for themselves. God doesn't want us to be stupid. He doesn't want us to be like uh, immature. We were talking the other day about the fig tree. The fig tree produces two kinds of fruit. A pod, which is an immature fig, and a tehina, which is a hot, fiery fig. Okay, not literally like it's spicy, so I know about what it's spicy here. But what I mean is that it means hot and fiery to aim on. Yep. God said, <laughs> Yeshua said, that I'd rather you be hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'm gonna spit you out of my mouth. And I'm saying that nice, he really means vomit you out. Okay, uh, listen, I don't wanna be vomited, okay, out of somebody's mouth, okay? I don't wanna be cold, fire, he said fire, that's it. We aren't supposed to be on fire for the Lord. Every one of us, if something is trying to make us lethargic and lazy, run around. Go around your neighborhood and scream and say, I'm on fire for the Lord. Okay, do something. Don't let religion and organized structures, you know, make you lethargic. Serious. Okay, that's, that's what this day is about. A group of crazy Jews, 12 of them, going all about preaching and stirring up the masses and they get thrown in jail and they get beat and they don't come out saying, what was me, they come out preaching. Yes, Josh. Re rejuvenated Jews. Yeah, <laughs> rejuvenated. Rejuvenated. So, you know, uh, I think I kind of covered everything in, in that little thing. Um, there's there's two show bars, okay. In Genesis 22, not Genesis 26. We were talking about that. We had, we had, we had, uh, shut up. Okay, it's Genesis 22. God God tells Abraham, bring your son, your only son, and bring him up to the mountain. We're on page nine, and offer him up there for me. <laughs> and, and and he brings his son up. And instead of slaying his son, okay, the angel holds his hand back, and he there's a ram caught in the thicket by its horns, which represents the thicket is a crown of thorns around its head, around its horns. Now the Jews say, and I, I'm, again, I'm quoting Jews, a traditional thing that's said, is that God resurrected the ram. But I actually think that they actually took the two horns and they saved it, and then God took it into heaven. Two horns. They say the left horn is blown on. It was blown on Shavuot when the, when when not the the second one, the first one. When when God when God gave the word and God spoke the ten instructions. Okay. I don't like using the word commandments because because command means he commanded. No, it actually would be better to say he gave us the ten words or the ten instructions. Okay us to do okay and it, it basically has to do with how we love God and how we love each other that's all he said you even said that the whole ten commandments are summed up in two love the Lord your God with all your heart soul and strength and love your neighbor as yourself we all know that we all give what we can to God and say Lord this is as far as I'm gonna go with you I, I like my Methodist religion no Okay, this is as far as I'm going to go with you. I left my Pentecostal religion. Or I'm going to go this far because I'm a Baptist. Okay, you know, different things like that. When God says, why don't you come all the way with me? Okay? I don't want you on first base or just in second base. I want you to come all the way. Fire up for me. Love me. Love me completely. Because I did this for you because I love you completely. God loves us completely. Ah, man. He loves us so much. And if we, we can understand that, we can, we can truly love everybody else. He said, love, love your neighbor as yourself. 
We all love to quote, love your neighbor, but we never say it as yourself. As the way you love yourself, love your neighbor, that's everything. We do everything for us, right? Let's do everything for our neighbor. Uh, two chauffeur oak. The first one was blowing on the first shallow oak, and the other chauffeur is being saved for when Messiah comes for his body, his believers, for the dead of Messiah will rise and we go to life will be changed. Okay? So he's coming for his bride, and that shofar will be blown, that white one, it's called the last shofar, or some interpret, the last trump of God. It's not President Trump, okay? It's it's the last shofar on that, on that animal, on that ram, caught in the thicket. Okay, that's gonna be blown. Okay. Um, this season is all about the pouring out of the Spirit. Because God wants us to be refreshed. He wants us to be renewed. Listen, He wants us to be on fire for Him. If you want to be on fire for the Lord, ask for the Holy Spirit. We need more of the Holy Spirit. I want to be so filled that I burst, that I'm exploding. That, that the Holy that healing is going for not just for me, but everybody's functioning in their gift, in their office, in their talents, and their skills, and using it for God, and the temple of God is built up, and, and this great light shines out of nobodies. God uses nobodies. Tell me anywhere in the Bible where God used somebody great at first. He, he always chose the nobodies. And if, even if we think we're somebody, you know, remember, humility, because... It says it's impossible to please God who's close to a broken and contrite spirit. But you know what? God wants us to be successful. God wants us to be successful. Because we will shine His glory that way. Uh, loving each other, taking care of each other, being blessed when the whole world's being cursed. Okay, that's what He wants from us. Okay, the leaven the, the weather loaves. The leaven loaves. Okay. <clears throat> They will weigh the leaven loaves. Two of them. Why two leaven loaves of wheat? It's the Jew and the Gentile. God wants us together. God wants us united, loving each other, and following His Torah by the Spirit. This is the biggest problem we have, is the lack of unity in the body of Messiah. Everybody's trying to find fault with each other, and God just wants us to sit to, to love each other. He said this, these loaves were on middle of page 12. These loaves were made up of two tenths of an ephod of fine flour. You know what an ephod is? Ten omers. So one omer for a Gentile. One over for the Jew, and the two, you know, get together, you know, with all of our flaws, because of 11, okay? The whole story of Ruth, this brings up the whole story of Ruth. The entire book of Ruth was made during the counting of the Omer. Did you know that? Try reading it sometime, it's amazing. But in the, in the book of Ruth, and actually Ruth, there's no TH in Hebrew, so it'd be the book of Ruth, okay? Um, in the book of Ruth, uh, basically, this man and his wife, Elimelech and Naomi, they, they're having a really hard time. There's terrible times in Israel, and they're not trusting the Lord, so they go to Moab to live. And their sons, they had two sons, and their two sons find very nice women, each, each one. They take a wife, but then the sons die, and Naomi's husband, Elimelech, die while they're in that land. And then Naomi hears that it's getting better in Israel. So she says, I'm going back to my home. Okay. So he tells his two daughters, let's go to the book of Ruth. I'm not actually sure exactly where it was where, where he says we're in the book of Ruth. But it's, I think it's before Kings, right? First, before Samuel. It's before Samuel. Okay, in the very beginning, this is what she says, 
in Ruth chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 11. Naomi said, Return, my daughters, daughters-in-law, really, because they were married to a son who both died. Why should you go with me? Yet I have sons, do I have sons in my womb, or that they may be your husbands? Return, my daughters, go, for I am, I am too old to have a husband. If I said I have hope, if I should even have a husband tonight and also bear sons, would you therefore wait until they are grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is harder for me than for you. For the hand of Yehovah has gone out, forth against me. She was feeling sorry for herself. And they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Okay, and she said, Behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods. Now pay attention to that. Her, your sister-in-law, so you follow your sister, go back to your gods, go back to your people. But this is what Ruth says. Do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. Thus may the Jehovah do to me, or worse, if anything but death parts you and me. When she saw, when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. In other words, she said, I'm not going back to my gods and I'm not going back to, to my people. I go with you. You have the true God. Your ways are now my ways. I'm following you. That should be the heart of the Gentiles today. Let's go with Israel. Let's go with the Jews. Let's follow their God and leave our lies, our false gods. As believers, we are no longer obliged to follow any of the false things that we've been taught. We are to follow the truth. Follow this word by the Spirit. Go with the Jew, because Ruth would be so blessed when she did that. Yeah. She was so blessed when she did that. You know what happened to her? She ended up being the mother of the child that would soon bring forth David, the king, who later would bring forth Messiah, the real king. God included them to Moabites, which means actually that um, of my father. Okay, uh, I, I'm not exactly quoting that correctly, but basically that this is where, um, it's kind of a long story, but the Moabites and Am Ammonites came from Lot and his two daughters, where they thought it was the end of the world when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, Adman, Zabon. <laughs> they thought it was the end, so they, they thought, well, let's get, let's get our father, let's get pregnant by our father. And that's where the Moabites and the Ammonites came from. Okay. So this is where they came from, but they gave it all up to follow the God of Israel. And that's what God wants. Let us be so unified and so in love with each other. Jew and Gentile together as one. Can you imagine what that would do? Can you imagine what how it would reverberate? God doesn't, you know, our, us Jews have a lot of traditions and religion. Too. And, and if we're willing to walk by the Spirit, we can be free of that. But there's a lot of falseness in the teachings of Christianity that come from Rome that we have to get rid of. But you know what? It has to be out of love. The Gentiles have to, have to say, I want to get rid of that, and I want to follow you just as Ruth did. Leave my gods behind. You know who Orpah is to me? Orpah is those who reject Israel. Those who say, we have replaced Israel. That's who Orpah is. There's a lot of believers who fall into the Orpah life. So, I think I'm going to finish the teaching with that. And uh, we're going to wave the wave. We're going to raise the wave loads and do the blessing for the bread and for the wine. And then the closing blessing of the Torah.
from the earth.
Okay. Jesus, the final word here on that. Okay, so let's bring out the Fupa. I need four people to help me to hold the Fupa.
saying what the Spirit of the Lord is saying through you. You are my mouthpiece.
Now is the time to be violent. Now is the time to be violent. And those who have ears will hear. Those who have ears will hear. And listen to the voice of the Spirit. Listen, listen.
Shalom. Yehovah bless you and keep you. Yehovah lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. Yehovah lift up his face upon you and give you peace. In the name of our Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, he is going to go before you and he is behind Amen. you. He is with you. Amen. You have yet to see the great things that he is going Amen. to do in the earth. And I say, my people, listen clearly. If the world shakes, do not shake with it. If the world fears, do not fear with it. If the world dies, do not die with it. For I have raised you up for such a time. Be a light. Be a light in the darkness. Did I not say in Isaiah 60 that darkness would cover the earth and deep darkness the peoples? But the light of God, the glory of the Lord will shine upon you. Blessed are you, Yehovah Elohim, King of the universe, brings forth the various kinds of foods. Amen. And Deborah, Debbie is going to give us some announcements. Thank you, everybody, for coming out this evening. Few announcements. Okay, we're going to study, uh, start the Hebrew class again, especially for those who are new, because we're going to start all over again. So we're going to just study one word, one letter, one letter a week for uh, like 20 to 30 minutes, and then we're going to watch a video. Yeah, uh, we've been watching the series called The Chosen. And it's very powerful, and I think it also could be used to teach from. So we're going to 
watch an episode a week. Uh, right after Shabbat, we'll have our meal, uh, and and then we'll we'll have a short 20, 30 minute class, one letter a week, and then, and then we'll have the video. Okay, if you want to hang out with us, okay. If you don't want to hang out, that's up to you. Okay. Uh, so. Okay, once a month, on the first Tuesday of each month, we get together to pray for Israel, Jacob, at the building on East Yandel. You're welcome to come. We start from 10 and we end at 11. And the next prayer session will be Tuesday, June the 2nd. Okay, we're currently having prayer on Facebook Messenger on Friday mornings at 10 a.m. And once the virus crisis is over, that time can change and the day can change. So remember to keep your tithes and offering. This is for the ministry and this is for Israel. And those who want to give electronically, uh, the handle is uh, dollar sign, Rabbi K-H-M-F. And that's for cash app. Okay. And uh, they already talked about meeting at his house tomorrow at 8, uh, bring the shofars back, and don't forget to bring your mask. Yes, don't bring your mask because in case there might be a police officer along Trans Mountain saying, what are all these people out there singing and dancing without any face masks? We'll be covered. You don't have to wear it. Okay, but if they stop us, we can just say, oh, well, we were worshiping. We didn't think we put them on yet. Whatever. Okay. So I say Shavuot Shalom or Chag uh, Sameach Shavuot. And, uh, and we'll close. And I hope you are all blessed on Facebook. Amen.